Well, greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well today. Well, once again, we are back for a alphabetically, state-by-state, state, subscriber dogman encounter. Before we get into today's upload, though, a couple links. As you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, and my merch store to help the channel to continue to grow and go. The links to Patreon and PayPal are in the description below. My merch is displayed directly under this video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1, 2, and 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeffrey Nadalny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, the links to which are also in the description as well. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's get on with today's upload, shall we? Today we are going to go to the state that is famous for gumbo, Cajun cooking, voodoo, hoodoo, rougarou, my friend Dark Waters, my other friend DNA Restorations, and much more. We are going to that great state of Louisiana. Today's first Louisiana subscriber encounter is very interesting how it came to light. Uh, I read his post on Reddit and he and I talked a little bit. I asked him if I could share his Reddit post. He said, sure. Shortly after I said, do you mind coming on the channel and sharing your experiences in your own words? And he said, absolutely. He did, it was a great show. And today we are going to share once again that encounter. So a little backstory before I get into the good part. I grew up outside of Chicago, but spent my youth summers fishing, camping, and canoeing in Minnesota and parts of Canada. After college, I spent over a decade in the army and spent a good chunk of it overseas. Through all of this, plus recreational travel, I've seen lots of things. And the purpose of this is still perplexed as to what I saw. Currently, I am living in southwest Louisiana, working for a sheriff's office where I live. One night, approximately a year ago, I was patrolling through a small town of where I live and saw something. I still have no clue what it was, but I saw something. I had just made a turn, and as I was heading through the small town, which happens to have a decent amount of wooded area throughout the town, I saw something run across the road in front of my unit. The only way to describe what I saw is it was all black, it had a bushy tail similar to a German Shepherd in proportion, it was running on two legs, it ran hunched forward, similar to a raccoon. Problem is, this thing's back was higher than a door mounted rear view mirror on my charger. Now think about this, that's three and a half feet. Whatever I saw, I swear to God, was like six feet long running like this. So it ran across the street, maybe 20 feet in front of my unit. And as soon as my brain processed what I saw, I turned around as fast as I could, turned on my LED scene light. Whatever it was, it was gone. So this is where it gets very interesting. It was maybe two in the morning or so when I saw that. About an hour after, I swung into the local gas station to check on the night shift clerk. We get to talking, and he asks me the usual. How's the night going? Any good calls? Anything crazy tonight? I responded saying, yeah, man, I saw something. It's weird, though. I had just turned off the highway to head south through town, and I'm not really sure what I saw. The clerk, mind you, I haven't described what I saw or anything to him because I didn't want to sound crazy proceeds to tell me about how a few days prior he was riding his bike home just after midnight and how he saw something as well and goes on to describe the same exact thing I saw. I literally stood there dumbfounded, not saying a word, 
I, honest to God, had the chills every time I think about that night. The clerk looked at my response to what he described to me and literally said, Oh, you saw it too. Thank God I'm not crazy. I've told this story to my brother, who's really into Sasquatch, Dogman, Lizard people, and he believes I saw a juvenile Dogman. Now, of course, during the interview, he shared a little bit more uh, geography, not exact county, because he wanted to remain anonymous. He is still active duty. Um, shared how this thing would have been bigger than the clerk on his bicycle. Um, a little bit more details. I'm going to reach out and see if he'd be willing to come back on uh, and discuss this a little further. Um, super nice guy. I had a blast talking to him before, during, and after. Uh, so hopefully I can get him to come back on. That'd be really cool. Anyway, moving on. Today's second subscriber, Louisiana Encounter. Hey Jeff, my name's BD. I'm 43. I've lived in Louisiana my entire life. I live about 30 minutes south of Lafayette, Louisiana. I've been hunting, fishing, trapping since I was old enough to hold a gun or a fishing pole. I've been working in the swamps and marshes since I was 16. I've hunted alligators, crawfish, commercial fishing, and seismograph drilling, and many other things. I've had strange things happen to me in the swamps and woods, paranormal things. But my first cryptid encounter happened about six years ago. I live in the woods in a small home behind my parents' house, and I didn't have a driveway to my house. I'd have to park at my parents' house and walk down a path to mine. I would usually wake up at four in the morning, get ready for work. I'd get up, make my coffee, make my lunch for the day, let my dog out before I leave. This particular morning, I went to let my dog out to do his business. I opened the door to let him out. He took a couple of steps onto the porch, but would not go down the steps. My dog's name is Buck, and he is a 145-pound white American pit bull, and has never been scared of anything. He was a very special dog to me. He saved my life when my trailer caught fire. He dragged me off the couch to wake me up. Anyway... When I go to let him out, he just stands on the porch, growling and hair standing up on his back and neck. So I go to walk him off the porch, and all he would do is stand in front of me and push me into the house. So I just let him back in and got ready for work. I got dressed, made my lunch, and got ready to go. When I walk out the door, he gets between me and the door. I figure he just didn't want me to leave him because I'd bring him everywhere but work. So... I just push past him, lock the door, and start my walk to where my truck's parked. To get to my truck, I have to walk down a path, which is about 75 yards through the woods, and another 100 yards through a field in my parents' yard. It's always dark when I leave, so I use my little flashlight on my keychain, which is not that bright. I get about halfway through the wooded part of the trail, and this feeling of fear comes over me. Now, I'm not one that scares easily. I've had a rather rough life growing up. I have been in and out of jail, been shot, stabbed twice. I have even fought in unlicensed bare-knuckle street fights for money. I'm not saying this to brag or because I'm proud of it. That's quite the opposite. I'm ashamed of it. It's a fact that I have never been as scared in all of those situations as I was when I was feeling this fear come through me. This was different. It was a primal fear. I've been in the woods a thousand times at night and never felt scared. Anyway, I couldn't shake that fear away. I'm shining my piece of crap flashlight around looking into the woods and I don't see anything so I keep on walking. When I made it out of the wooded part of the trail, I turned to the right and took a few steps. Then I heard a sound like a twig break. In my immediate turn, I shined the light. I could see a black figure by the edge of the woods. It was about four and a half feet tall with yellowish eyes. It kind of looked like a big dog, almost like a Great Dane, but bigger. I couldn't make it out too well with my light. I could just see the shape, 
We stared at each other for a few seconds, then I turned and started back to my truck. I took a few more steps, then heard another cracking noise. So I turned around again and shined my flashlight. That's when this creature stood up. All I could do was stand there, frozen. I wanted to run, but it was like I couldn't take my eyes off of this creature. I watched it take a few steps on its hind legs toward me. I finally got my legs to move, so I start running as fast as I can toward my truck. I still have about 80 yards to go. I wasn't sure if it was chasing me or not. Then I could hear its paws, whatever they were, hitting the ground. It kind of sounded like a horse does when it runs, except it was the sound of two feet, not four. I'm freaking out now, running as fast as I ever have. I would have given Forrest Gump a run for his money at that point. I can hear it breathing behind me. Now I know this sounds crazy, but I could feel its hot, nasty breath on the back of my neck. I really thought I was good as dead. I round the corner to where my parents' fence is. Now I only have 20 or more yards to go. This is when I was certain it was going to get me. I was praying that my truck door was unlocked because I figured... It's going to get me while I'm fumbling with my keys. Thank God when I grabbed the door handle, it was. I jumped in my truck and immediately turned the brights on. This is when I got the biggest shock of my life. This thing was just standing there by the fence in woods, just looking at me. Jeff, I can't even make this up. This thing looked like it had crawled out of the bowels of hell. Its head looked like the cross between a wolf and a hyena. Its ears almost looked like a rabbit's ears, but bigger, with tufts of fur on the tip. It looked black, with a little gray around its snout and chest. The shoulders on this thing were huge, like bowling balls. Its chest and torso were huge. Also, it was so muscled up, you could see the definition through its fur. Its upper body tapers down, like a V-shape. I'm a novice bodybuilder, and it makes me look like a baby. Hi. <laughs> I think it would have given Mr. Olympian a run for his money. Its legs were like dog legs, but much bigger. I was sure I was looking at a werewolf. The thing that really freaked me out was it looked dead at me and smiled. It didn't show its teeth like a dog does when it's mad. The sink smiled at me. I could see every one of its sharp teeth. It stood there grinning, rocking back and forth, then just makes one leap and it's out of sight. I left, I got about three miles away, got sick and had to throw up. I called my parents to tell them that I saw a man all in black creeping around their house to get their guns and lock their door. I didn't know how to say I saw a friggin' werewolf. If I learned anything from this, it's trust your dog. He was trying to warn me, and I didn't listen. I miss him so much. He was my best friend I had ever had. I had him for 16 years. He passed away last year. I'm tearing up now thinking about him. I'll never get over him. It just gets worse every day. Thanks for what you're doing, Jeff. I know you help a lot of people. You sure helped me. P.S. Please don't use my real name. Thanks, friends, and God bless. So then I get his second and third encounter in one email. He also um, is a super, super nice guy. Sent me a um, alligator head, which is now hanging on my studio wall. And is one of my favorite things in this studio. Um, I've got a couple of things that, that subscribers have sent me paintings, t-shirts, gator head, <laughs> um, cool Native American patches. And I mean, the gator head is just, I don't know, it's something about it. It just makes me smile. Um, when I was younger, my aunt who was on the uh, Native American dance circuit before I joined actually got me a baby alligator stuffed like a dinosaur kind of and I was into dinosaurs huge when I was little so it kind of reminds me of that but this was well before the time of um snowflakeville and things like that were were appreciated and you know 
taxidermy was actually a very interesting hobby for people before people shunned them and really degraded that. But anyway, moving on, I'm sorry. So Jeff, my second encounter happened about a month after the first. It was about two in the morning and my dog wakes me up to growling next to my bedroom window. So I walk over to the window and check it out. I pull back the blinds and look out, but I don't see anything, so I get back into bed. I finally get my dog settled down. As soon as I start to drift back to sleep, I'm awoken to scratching on the side of my house by my bed. So I get up again, grab my 44 from the nightstand, and go to the window again. This time when I pull the blinds down, I'm face to face with a dog man looking in at me with its nose against my window screen. Jeff, I about piss myself. It was just standing there, staring at me. The second I picked up the pistol and pointed it at this dog man, it moves away from the window as fast as I have ever seen anything move in my life. It didn't look real how fast this thing moved. It was almost cartoonish how fast it was when I pointed the gun at it. This creature knew exactly what a gun was. Needless to say, I didn't sleep for the rest of the night. The next day, I installed motion detection lights all around my house. I put alarms on all the windows and doors. Ever since, I sleep with a 4570 government lever action on one side of my bed and an AK-47 with a 75 round drum mag on the other. I don't know if it will save me or not if one gets in, but I will sure do everything I can to come out alive. I don't really think these dogmen are out to kill people. I actually think they take pleasure in scaring people. Jeff, my third encounter happened in September. I was on my way home from a friend's party. It was about three in the morning when I pulled in my driveway and my headlights are shining where my parents kept the trash can. I could see the can was on its side. I could see something halfway inside of it. When I get a little closer, the thing pulls its head out of the trash and looks at the truck for a couple seconds, stands up, then casually walks off into the woods. This one was different from the other two that I had seen. It had a much more slender body. It was light brown in color. Its head looked like a German Shepherd's. It also had a short, bushy tail. It was about five and a, five and a half feet tall. I think it was a female. I haven't seen any more sense then, but I do hear screaming and howling at night sometimes. Something's getting into my trash can. I can hear the lid slamming at night, and sometimes it's on its side in the morning. The trash cans everyone has around here are big. It stands about four and a half feet, so I know it has to be big to do that. I'm pretty sure it's a dog, man. Thanks for taking your time out to read this, Jeff. God bless, everyone. Now, also, his mom, this is going off the top of my head because I've had him on as well, and I'd like to have him back on the show as well, too. Um, but to share these encounters and some paranormal ones, too. But his mom, now, the Rougarou is known as this mist. Uh, it's known as a physical entity and um, a mist-like entity. Well, his mom... I believe the story goes, so if you're looking out his parents' window in the back of the house, you kind of see his his building or his home, um, or at least if he's walking down there. Well, I believe how it went was he was walking, he had just left his mom's, and he was walking down the path, and his mom saw this mist-like shape follow him. Um, I believe she called him when he got back into his house to tell him, hey, you know, I just saw this weird. And, you know, the second he told me that, I instantly thought Rougarou because, you know, you do so many, you research so much, you start to really kind of think into things sometimes, you know, like it could have been just a mist or they're in Louisiana and the Rougarou is at one point classified in like a mist sometimes dog man um sometimes a gator man uh it's just a scourge of the swamp you know anyway 
hopefully I can uh, get in touch with my friend here. And I know he's still a subscriber because I see him comment every once in a while. And uh, he'll be willing to come back on and shoot the breeze with us all. Today's third Louisiana subscriber submission. Hey, Jeff. This happened Saturday, 6.30 in the morning, 2004, outside of Crawley, Louisiana. 70526, foggy morning, hunting along an abandoned set of railroad tracks with my hunting dog, Hunter Bone, a German shepherd, trained to kill in Louisiana bayous. Hence, because something out of the fog, walking between the railroad tracks and standing before me with this huge, giant dog thing with a wolf head, built like Arnold Schwarzenegger. My dog and I were petrified, stone cold, frozen, terrified. Yellow eyes, big teeth, seven foot or larger, 400 pounds werewolf creature growling at us. I raised my 12 gauge Remington at it, shot off one round of triple buckshot over the damn thing's head. Blammo, the wolf dog jumped up and shook violently. Then it ran back over the train bridge and into the swamp. We ran back to the rails to the pickup. I do recall turning at about 50 yards to fire two more rounds for insurance reasons. I then drove back to Crawley, Louisiana, pulled into the Exxon gas station, and told a Louisiana state patrolman I just almost killed a dog creature on the old rail railway 20 minutes ago. You did? Well, you might want to keep that to yourself. Our supervisor told us not to discuss these types of stories so the public won't be alarmed. I have seen big critters run in front of my cruiser, and they were not small animals. So with that, I returned home and called the Louisiana wildlife people. Their response, sir, we don't need any booty man stories and such, so call us back if you need our assistance. Click, he hung up the phone. And I went for a single shot of whiskey to calm my nerves. I've never returned to that area in all these years. I was a mad. The wildlife agency never told me of these dogman animals in the 25 years of hunting alone in the dark and desolate Louisiana bayous. So watch yourself if you are stubborn and insist on being a lone wolf type hunter. God bless and stay safe. Now, this is an interesting email that I received from him, all right? The McCaffrey Poultry Farm south of Shreveport, Louisiana, was invaded by numerous werewolf-type creatures recently and was witnessed by several farm workers trying to get to the chickens to devour them. One worker recalled, The were-dog was walking upright on two hind legs and coming towards me. I went to the work truck and seized the shotgun to ward the thing off. It ran out of the area and into the tree line surrounding the 100-year-old farm. The McCaffrey Poultry Facility is south of Shreveport, Louisiana, and other pig and cattle ranchers were notified to stay on alert for this creature, as there may be many more of them hunting about the backwoods and forests of North Louisiana. This encounter was reported to the State Wildlife Agency. And further information is pending as winter approaches in 2008. This isn't the first time this encounter has occurred in North Louisiana, as the state parks, such as uh, Kasichi National Forest and areas around Fort Polk and Sam Houston State Park, have had reports for decades here in the Bayou State. Officials warn the general public to be cautious when camping these zones as safety precautions. You know, I got this guy's number. I'm going to have to give this guy a call and see if he'd be willing to come on the show. Um, huh. Cause that, that, that last part of, you know, the second email is very interesting. And, um, you know, it sounds like to me, this guy knows what's going on. And uh, I'd like to hear what he's got to say about some more stuff going on in that area. So hopefully keeping our fingers crossed as well. Today's fourth Louisiana subscriber submission. 
Hey Jeff, this information is yours to do as you please. I am speaking honestly and I've only told a few people about my encounters. I don't want or need recognition. These things are out there. I'm originally from Louisiana and I've come from a family of hunters and fishermen. I had a Bigfoot encounter near Toledo Bend in Louisiana around the age of five. I was literally scared senseless during my first Bigfoot encounter. My family loved to embark on very long fishing trips. They came back the night before and got everyone up around 4.30 in the morning the next morning to get the vehicles loaded up. We'd always stop at ShopRite and buy some fresh bait and head to Anacoco Beach or to Toledo Bend. Growing up in Louisiana and Texas, you hear about monsters, swamp man, Bigfoot, alligator, or reptile-like creatures, werewolves, or rougarou. I never believed in any of that. It scared me so bad and my cousins. My aunts and uncles had experiences that they shared with us, but I honestly thought they were just stories, Jeff. One thing about Louisiana is that people start heading out in a hurry when the sun is going down in certain areas. They will literally tell you, hey, sun's going down, it's time to get out of here. We were asked to walk a few minutes out from where we were fishing to go number two. I had an older brother that did some very questionable things to me in the spirit of fun and jokes. This particular day, I, my brother, and my cousin Ty had to go number two at the same time. We were told to walk together and look out for one another. We walked about 15 minutes deep into the woods and started the you go, I'll look routine. I and my brother took first watch, then Ty and me took second. When it was my turn, I walked about 15 feet further back from their dump sites and took mine. Imagine my surprise when I watched them turn toward me, laugh, and run off. I knew they had left, and I started to cry, but went ahead and finished up. Everything went quiet. No birds, insects, or anything making any noise. Fear and panic set in. There was also a foul scent. I had actually been smelling it the whole while, but I thought it was my brother and cousin's dump sites in the wind. As I finished wiping and barely had gotten my pants up, I heard a gruntish growl behind me. I turned around, and if I had not gone number two already, guess what I would have. Absolute terror, the kind of where you cannot move. You're scared stiff. Not one, but two big feet. One male, one female. They were covered in a dark blackish fur. It could have been a dark brown, but extremely dirty and matted in some areas. I forced myself to slowly move backwards as the tears are flowing. I knew I was going to die alone without anyone ever knowing what happened to me. The male was the aggressor, grunting loud, low growls, and very aggressive arm and body movements, not towards me, but to the surrounding trees. It was literally grabbing branches the size of four by sixes and snapping them like they were twigs. I had no idea how to get back to the fishing spot. I was lost alone with two monsters. This next part is nothing short of a miracle. The female with obvious breasts and much slimmer than the male raised her left hand and pointed in the direction I had come from. She slapped her right in the center of her chest then swung it toward me. I didn't speak Bigfoot, but I knew she was telling me how to get back. She began to walk to the left of me, heading the way I came from. The male followed about five steps behind her, watching my every move. He showed his dismay of me and the situation by low growls and grunts towards me and the female. He simply did not want her to help me, just to leave me alone and let me figure it out. They both walked me close enough to hear my aunt's voice cursing my cousin and brother for leaving me out there. I walked toward my aunt's voice, glanced back, and watched them walk back into the forest. My aunt believed me, and my mom and a few other family members thought I was abducted and had been held by a man and a woman. They went on a brief search and found huge-ass footprints. That was my first Bigfoot encounter at the age of five. 
Now, today's last part is a subscriber's kind of submission, but not really. Now, we all started out with this whole dog man community. Um, you know, there were stories posted on the internet, stories posted on Reddit, stories just plastered everywhere. And at one point, that's what everybody was narrating on their channel. It was just like a... Uh, uh, just a big copycat show, if you ask me. That's the best way I can explain it. So, needless to say, when I was starting out, I mean, that's what I did as well. I just want to do shared dogman encounters that, you know, I heard from people or, you know, I found on the internet. Well, I had shared one from Jefferson Parish, Louisiana. And um, this guy had went out hunting and uh, he was hunting over by a levee. And it was probably like 100 yards from some houses, canals and stuff, and to the left, a natural ridge, and more marshes and swamps and yada yada. So he hears uh, this brush start shaking and uh, he hears a growl. It's, it's dark out. He shines his flashlight in the direction he sees his pair of eyes. And um, he then realizes that these eyes are a foot above him and he's six foot tall. So he's backing out of this area and he's carrying an AK-47, a uh, Romanian AK. Um, I think he was hunting or wild pig or something, I believe. Um, he describes this creature. Um, the body was covered in black hair with some brown mix. The hair was thickest around its head, neck, chest, and upper back. It looked a lot like a lion's mane, but it wasn't as pronounced. Uh, had pointed ears with a little bit of hair coming to the point, making the ears seem longer. It stood on two legs. They were bent backwards. The arms were long, longer than the legs. Its hands were a mixture of a human and a bear, almost like a, a large raccoon paw. Um, he described it as the howling. So, of course, now he sees this. He's freaking out. And um, he uses these special rounds in his Romanian AK. Uh made for hunting hog. Um, he's dropped deer and hog with the round in one shot before. Now, he ends up pulling the rifle. It's still growling and walking towards him. Pop, pop, shoots it right in the chest. Bloom, hits it. Um, it took a step back. Uh, he takes off towards his truck. Um, and it makes this loud howl, growl, whatever. And he, you know, is thinking, I've been hunting all my life. I thought I knew everything. Um, this thing is stalking him through the woods after one shot to the chest. And, of course, he has tried to, you know, find this happened when he was like 17 or something like that. I'm not really sure. But he told a couple people, and um, I believe his grandfather said it was a Rougarou. Um, I think his grandfather or friend said he had something similar happen in the same area and whatnot. And whatever but the encounter ended up changing his entire life uh, he went back a couple days after the incident and found two large dog tracks as big as his hand and he said I wear a size large glove so it's a big hand I wear a size medium and I've got a pretty good sized hand um, he also found the casing to that AK and his girlfriend, this is the subscriber now, his girlfriend, made a necklace 
out of that bullet casing that he shot a dog man with. And I just thought that was wild. Um, because, I mean, that was actually like, that was probably before, I probably had like 600 subscribers when I just, you know, told that story. And then the next thing I know, she emails me and she's like, I have, and I, I wish I'd saved the email in the picture, but she sent me the picture of the necklace and, um, you know, it was just a really cool kind of addition to the story, you know, that he had went back to look for tracks, found the tracks, found the casing gave it to his girlfriend, told her the story, and she made a necklace out of it. <laughs> man, oh man. Only in Louisiana, right? All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's upload as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I am feeling a little better energized today. Um, I've got a little more pep in my step. I actually usually record these uploads at night, the previous night. That way I have them set for the next morning. Um, but I was so wiped out yesterday that I just, I couldn't do anything. And I actually got up this morning and felt amazing. Um, I hope it lasts. I really do. Um, but yeah, I had the energy to record first thing in the morning. And I've not had energy like that in a very long time. So I don't know if that's a, that's a good thing or a, precursor to something but please god i hope it's not anyway thank you for always tuning in thank you for being the best freaking subscribers on youtube you guys make it worth it you really do i don't know you know you guys just this channel just helps me helps me stay alive it really does but with that, please be kind to each other and may the great spirit watch over all of us and may he guide us through that path of life, that thing we call life, that whatever. Please just guide us in the right direction, great spirit. Have a good day, y'all.